Okay. Now, let's continue on and talk a little bit about relays. Now, relays are useful things um, that often use when you have you know, some sort of control circuitry, like you know, a five volt bit whacker. Um, and you need to switch on and off something that is a lot more current, a lot more voltage than your control circuitry can handle. So oftentimes um, they're depicted uh, as a coil wire and then as a connector up above it. So basically what happens is when you send current through this coil wire, it uh, uh, either um, push, it pushes, in this case, the connect contact close so that uh, current goes through. So let's uh, draw what a real circuit would look like here. Let's, let's say this is you know, 120 volts AC going to some motor here. And it's not normally open here. We have this going to say, I don't know, a 5 volt power supply, like on your bitwhacker. But we have a switch. So when the switch is closed, this thing actually pushes into this connection, the connection is closed, and the motor runs. Now, in actuality, oftentimes these are done so that it actually, the, the, the switch actually is pulled back and makes contact with the other circuit. But um, this is a typical way you might actually see, see this thing drawn. So I'll, I'll go with tradition here. Um, let me actually show you one of these. So again, let me zoom in. So this is a relay that I found in my uh, cabinet. You can see it actually says something like, uh, you can see here it says 5 volts DC on the top. Zoom in even closer. Yeah, 5 volts DC, and that generally means that's the coil voltage. And 120 volts AC, 24 volts DC. That's really how much power can go through this switch, this opening and closing, when you've tripped the relay. Now, here's a problem. I really don't know which uh, pins on this are the coil and which pins are the switch, basically, the, the, what's going to be tripped. So I'm going to set my multimeter again on the setting where it, go, where it beeps. And let's see if I can actually bring all this into, into uh, the shot at once. So you can see what's going on here. Okay. So I am going to try first these two pins. Ooh, I'm getting connection already. Okay, and it says the 60 ohms. Well, that's 60 ohms is kind of typical for a, a relay coil. Look at the other side, nothing. Let me look at, yeah, I got another pin up here. So I'm checking each pin with each other pin. Okay. Oop. There's a connection. Okay. So this has zero ohms. So given that there's no current going through this relay right now, I suspect this might be a single pole double throw. So this is already connected, but this is not. So what I'm going to do is pull on a breadboard here. So I can actually play with this a little bit. 
put in this connection. And now I am going to add some wires to my um, to my meter just for convenience purposes. That one didn't work so well. There we go. Okay. Now, before I had this pin and this pin, I thought, oops, I missed it, messed up on the breadboard. There we go. This pin and this pin connected. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Let's see. What happens when I put some voltage on that coil? Now, it wants 5 volts. I happen to have a relatively large battery here. This is again from my phone, from my computer. And, oops, I have it on the wrong parts of the, didn't align the relay properly. Here we go. Look at the, oops, the probe slipped. Okay. Did you hear that click? That click was the relay tripping. And, as I predicted, that circuit becomes open when the relay is tripped. Okay, so let me see what happens with that other pin, the pin I could predict would be closed when the relay trips. Make sure everything's still right here. There we go. So you can imagine, this is a 5 volt relay, you could use this on your uh, you could use a bit whacker to trigger the 5 volt coil, provided the bit whacker can provide enough uh, uh, current. Something like this, mm, it's going to be marginal. It uh, may take more than 20 milliamps, but uh, you have to look at the spec for each relay. I can just measure it, of course, with my multimeter. But um, once, if your bit whacker can trip it, then uh, you can actually control up to 125 volts. I believe this thing said it was 3 amps it could handle. Uh, um, at 120 volt, 5 volts, 124 volts, sorry, 120 volts AC, or it could handle 24 volts uh, at DC. Okay, so that's a relay. And note that these relays can come in just about every configuration we talked about before. Um, single pole, single throw, single pole, double throw, double pole, double throw, you know, etc. Of course, the more levers you have to move, the more current it takes for the relay to trip. Um, so you always got to look at your specs to see how much this, uh, the relay can, um, needs to trip, also how much current the relay can handle. Okay, see you next time.